Hello everyone, Ben DiBono here from Sci-Fi Christian, and I want to talk to you about Mother. This is the new Darren Aronofsky movie. I saw it on Monday. Uh, I have a lot of thoughts on it, and I also want to kind of give you a non-spoiler section here at the front to let you know if you should go see it. So I'm going to do non-spoilers at the beginning, and then we'll get into some more spoiler section. Uh, my thoughts on it, more review and interpretation in the second half, and I will try to make that clear when that's going to happen if we're watching, and I will also try to put a timestamp for that down in the comments, because I really think this is a movie that you don't want to have spoiled for you if you're going to go see it, which I don't necessarily think you should, but I also don't necessarily think you shouldn't. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but if you do go to see this, you should not go in uh, having it spoiled for you. It's better for you to kind of go in knowing as little as possible about the actual story and characters. I think you should know a little bit about the type of movie you're going to, to watch. Uh, but go into it cold and just kind of let it hit you and see how that goes for you and see what sort of interpretations you walk out of with it. So, let's start out with some non-spoiler stuff. Should you go see Mother? Well, let's break this down a little in terms of, I think, that people are going to react to this movie and are reacting to this movie in three different camps. There's going to be a small minority, and I do think it's a small minority, who are going to instantly love this movie. And they're definitely out there, and I can understand where they're coming from, uh, and I, I can see where this movie's clicking for them. I've read some of their reviews, and I think they're going to really, really love this movie. That's going to be a small minority. I think most people, especially most people in the general population, which this movie is being marketed uh, to a wide release, are going to hate this movie. And then there's going to be kind of the, the middle group, both in terms of size and reaction, that are going to walk out of this movie not quite sure what to think, but knowing that they need to think about it. Uh, for a while before they formed their reaction. And that's really where I landed personally. I was in that middle group. And so I saw it on Monday. I'm recording this on Friday night. So I've had four days to think about it. And I feel like I'm just now kind of getting to the point where I can say what I think of it in terms of quality, um, which I'll get into the second half. What I will say here in the first half is that while I do have some conflicted feelings about its quality, this is a movie that has had me thinking ever since I saw it. And I think that's a really good thing. So, you know, by contrast, I saw it uh, a couple weeks ago, right after it came out. And it, it was a fine movie and everything. I think you can make a substantial argument that quality-wise, it is maybe a better made movie in some ways. Though I don't entirely agree, but I, I, I wouldn't necessarily uh, go to the mat to defend that one. Uh, but it is a fairly forgettable movie, in my opinion. It's well made, it's fine, um, but it's fairly forgettable. And so I, e even to the extent where this movie is a failure, and it's not a complete failure, uh, but where it does fail in some places, it's really interesting and it gets into your head uh, in a good way and makes you think in a good way, and too few movies do that. For, so for that alone, I'm really glad I saw it. Uh, I'm also a big Darren Aronofsky fan, so I knew I was going to go see it. So what I want to try and do is just tell you a little bit about the what type of movie this is so that you can figure out roughly where you're going to fall in those three groups. And if you think you're the type of person who's going to fall into the hated group, I don't think you should go see this movie. Okay? Uh, so this is the type of movie where it really is more art house but it's not art house in the way that maybe some classics are. Like, for example, my favorite movie of all time is 2001 A Space Odyssey. And a lot of people see 2001 and they don't like it. And that's fair. Like, I think that's fair. But where I think you should be able to get to with something like 2001 is not everybody's necessarily going to enjoy the movie. Not everybody's going to be entertained by the movie. But where you should be able to get to with 2001 is you should be able to get to the point where you can appreciate that movie. You, everybody, I think everybody uh, who watches that movie should be able to come away with an appreciation for it. If you watch Mother and you hate it, 
I don't think you're ever going to get to a point where you appreciate the movie. I just don't. I don't think that's there. I think if you're the type of person who would hate this movie, uh, you're you're not ever going to be convinced otherwise. Not just in terms of entertainment, but in terms of value. I think people who don't like this movie um, are are it's just never going to work for them. And unlike other movies like 2001, where somebody says that about 2001, I'm going to argue with them because I think they should that. There is a point they should be able to get to with it. Uh, if you're not there with Mother, I wouldn't even bother arguing with you because I, I don't even think you're necessarily wrong. I think it's a very subjective movie that way, in the sense where if you hate it, you're going to hate it, and you're always going to hate it, and you would have been better off just never seeing it in the first place. So a couple things to know, spoiler free. Number one, this is not a horror movie. There are horrific things in it, but it's being marketed as a mainstream horror movie. In fact, one of the poster variants really... Uh, very explicitly uh, it evokes the Rosemary's Baby famous poster uh, with uh, the silhouette of the mother and everything and Rosemary, you know, you've seen the Rosemary's Baby poster, you know what I'm talking about. There's a similar one that has a silhouette of Jennifer Lawrence uh, with the house superimposed over her and it's almost identical to the Rosemary's Baby thing. This movie is not Rosemary's Baby. It's, this is not a horror movie, this is a, I would almost say it's a parable more than anything, it's a surrealist parable is, the, is what I would call this. There are certainly horrific things that happen in it. Uh, it's getting a lot of press for how uh, WTF it gets and how, how far out there some of the stuff gets in the second half. I'll be honest with you, I think a lot of that's being overblown. There are a couple of sequences in the movie that are pretty disturbing, but they're short. I think what people are responding to more is the, that there's a general feeling of uneasiness and wrongness that runs through this movie and that by the time you actually get to some of those shocking parts, I think a lot of people are just so worn down by this movie uh, that they are responding to those parts more than they would if the other 90 minutes preceding them uh, had a different tone. And that's the other thing you need to understand about this movie is that it is a taxing thing to watch. It's it's not a relaxing movie. It's not a fun movie, uh, even by Darren Aronofsky's standards. You know, he's done Requiem for a Dream and Black Swan, and I don't think either of those movies are necessarily joy fests. But you know, this is a taxing movie to watch, and I don't think that's a negative thing by any means. Uh, I think movies sh and art should demand something for you. It's fine to go to movies for entertainment but I have a problem with only going to movies for entertainment. I do think it's important to go to movies that ask something of you, but this movie doesn't just ask something of you, it really kind of drags you along and unsettles you along the way, um, which again, I, I don't consider necessarily a negative thing. I just think that there, you know, you need to know if you're the type of person who's gonna respond to a movie like that, um, and if the answer is no, you're just gonna come away hating it, uh, then you're probably not going to have a good time. Uh, the other thing to realize is that this is not necessarily a subtle movie, and I'll talk about some of those elements um, when we get into more of the review and interpretation, and I think that is one of the weak points in it, uh, but that's also the point that makes this something where it's harder to recommend to people who would be kind of on that hate it fence, because, by, for example, I'm going to make this comparison a lot in the review section, but to compare this to something like a David Lynch movie, I feel like David Lynch movies, not ne everything that happens in them isn't necessarily subtle. Like there are unsubtle things that happen, but the meaning of those things is really surreal, and the meaning of a David Lynch movie is more open to interpretation. Uh, this movie is going to kind of beat you over the head a little bit more, not only with the things that happen, but with what they mean. Uh, and that takes away some of that, whereas I think that if somebody goes and watches Mulholland Drive and they hate it, I feel like I could sit down and have a conversation that would get you to the point where you could appreciate it because there is enough subtlety there. There is enough uh, surrealist subjectivity in that movie where I think I could get somebody to the point where they would appreciate it. I don't think that's the case here, and so just... That, that's really as specific as I want to be. Hopefully that's helpful if you're kind of on the fence about whether or not you want to see this. If it's not helpful, I guess you can stick around for the spoiler section uh, and, and hear some more. But if you're thinking 
yeah, I think I, I probably do want to go see this. I would advise you to stop now. So spoilers from here on out. I'm going to get into uh, a review and interpretation. All right. So I'm assuming at this point I'm going to talk to you as though you have seen the movie. Uh, so if you stuck around even though you haven't seen it, you can go read the Wikipedia summary if you get lost. So in terms of quality, there's a couple problems with this movie that I had. And it goes to what I was just saying a minute ago, that there's not a lot of subtlety in the interpretation of this movie. And I think that's a problem, and it's a problem that is exacerbated both by what is on the screen and by behind-the-scenes stuff. So let's go back to this comparison to David Lynch for a second. Uh, in a David Lynch movie, if we look at what's on the screen, it's confusing. It's when you first watch it, it feels like it doesn't make any sense. But for the most part, David Lynch's plots are puzzles. Okay, not every piece necessarily fits in them, but you can go through and figure out what is going on in terms of plot with Mulholland Drive. You can go through Lost Highway and figure out what's going on with the plot. Uh, there are certainly elements that don't neatly fit into those interpretations, so it's not an open and shut thing. Same thing with this new season of Twin Peaks. Where David Lynch is much more subtle is in terms of what that means and why he's doing it and, and what we should be taking away from this and all of that. And to his great credit, he refuses to interpret his films. He refuses to say, this is what it means. This is what that means. And, and even when he does interviews, he's really very vague at, at times in interviews, and at times that can be frustrating. I mean, I think after the, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but after the finale of, of season three of Twin Peaks, there's a lot of us who are like, oh, I'd kind of like David Lynch to come out and just explain it to me, and, and then he doesn't do that, and now that we're a few weeks away, though, I'm, you know, I'm still thinking through that season, but okay, no, that's the right choice. That's what we want here. We don't, I don't want him to hold my hand. Okay. Contrast that to Mother. So in Mother, I think there are a lot of different ways you can interpret things in Mother, and that's good. But it's also really obvious watching the movie how Darren Aronofsky wants you to interpret it. And that's bad. Because a surrealist movie should never be preachy. Okay? So there are morals and whatnot that you can take away from David Lynch movies. There are messages you can take away, but... It never feels as though there's one that David Lynch is holding up and saying, go think this, and that isn't the case here. And the interpretation that, that Aronofsky wants you to take away is the ecological interpretation. Now, I have no problem with somebody interpreting the movie that way. It's certainly there. What I have a problem with is the fact that the movie is so determined that you interpret it that way. Now, if you can ignore that interpretation, uh, or ignore at least how adamantly the movie wants you to have that interpretation. There's a lot of different la interpretive layers you can pull out of this movie, and then it becomes a really interesting thing to think about. We'll talk about some of those in just a second. But it bugs me when I'm sitting there, um, and the movie's so determined. It's it's a it's a surrealist piece, but it's a surrealist piece that has a specific message it wants me to take away. And I don't think those two things work very well together. So, for example, one of the other ways you can interpret this movie is as, uh, you can interpret it as, as depicting a failing marriage. So, a parable for a failing marriage. And that's certainly there in the movie, and it's really interesting to think about the movie in those terms. But the part of what makes it so interesting to think about the movie in those terms is that it's not forcing you into that box. It's not trying to corner you and say, look at me that way. And if it was, then that interpretation would be obnoxious in it, and the ecological one would be the more interesting one to look at it through. So it's not the... It's, my problem isn't with specifically, let's think about Mother Earth while we're watching this movie. My problem is with the movie essentially holding a big neon flashing sign and saying, think about Mother Earth while you're watching this movie. And I don't think that works with surrealism. Well, it doesn't work with surrealism. Uh, or if it does, Darren Aronofsky has not cracked the code on how to make it work. 
Okay, so I mentioned it on screen and then behind the camera because this is also exacerbated by what he's done during press for this movie, which is that he has come right out and said, this is what the movie means. And you can go read interviews with him and he lays it out. He lays out his ecological interpretation. And I heard one review that even talked about how he, the press office, he had distributed a statement from him to reviewers before they saw the movie that he wanted them to read so that they would have this interpretation in mind. And I don't respect that at all. Uh, I, I really enjoy Darren Aronofsky's movies. I, I respect him a lot as a filmmaker. I don't know much about him as a person, uh, but I really respect him as an artist. I think he's made some of the most interesting movies of the 21st century. You know, I love The Fountain, so fight me. You know, I think that's his best movie, and I love that movie. Uh, and I will fight you all day long. I know people hate it, but uh, I, I will defend that movie to the end, that is a great, great movie. Uh, see, I love Darren Aronofsky, but you don't do this, and you don't do that especially with a surrealist movie. He needed to take a page out of David Lynch's book and just let, you know, let the critics blast him. If that's gonna happen, let the critics blast him. And then let the movie age and have people come back in five, ten years and say, you know what? There's actually, this is actually more interesting than maybe we thought it was, and that's the type of thing that could have happened with this movie, even if he had kept his mouth shut. Even with some of the problems in the movie itself, if he had kept his mouth shut, I think he would have, you know, just weather the storm, you're fine, and then let your movie age. Stanley Kubrick did the same thing, right? You look at Kubrick's movies, and again and again and again, uh, he's not, you know, he wound up doing, he's not quite as extreme as David Lynch in refusing to talk about the meaning of his films, but he was very hesitant to when you read interviews with him, uh, which I've read most of the interviews he's given, and he doesn't get into that a lot. He'll talk, he'll discuss some themes, but he's not interested in forcing interpretation. And what happens with his movies again and again and again is they kind of got this, what? response when they first came out and then five years go by and ten years go by and people are like, oh my gosh, this is uh, incredible and now these movies are regarded as masterpieces. And I'm not saying that would happen to Mother. Uh, it's not a Stanley Kubrick movie in terms of quality by any means, but something along those lines could have happened and I think he just shot himself in the foot and I don't respect that and I think that's a big mistake. Especially if you're going to be a surrealist filmmaker, don't do that. Don't go and tell people what your surrealist movie means. So that gets to kind of where I am in terms of a star rating for this. I think I'm, I'm like, if I had to give it a star rating out of five, I'd give it three, three and a half, somewhere in there. So I like the movie. I think it's a, I'm really glad I saw it. I, I will likely watch it again at some point, uh, just as part of watching Aronofsky's work. But it is frustrating at the same time because I think it's so close to being a surrealist masterpiece and there are, it just needed a little more polish, a little more subtlety, and uh, Darren Aronofsky needed to keep his mouth shut. And those three things happen, and I think he's made a great surrealistic movie, and has positioned himself as kind of the next, uh, the David Lynch for the next generation. Okay, so let's talk interpretation, because I do think this movie is interesting to think about on an interpretive level. So I already mentioned a couple. There's the ecological one, which... Mm, it's boring as hell. And then there's the marriage one, and that's more interesting. You know, and obviously the Bible stuff is not subtle in this movie either. You know, we haven't even talked about the Bible stuff. But to be honest, the Bible, the lack of subtlety in the Bible stuff didn't bother me as much because I felt like the Bible stuff worked as an interpretive backdrop rather than as an actual interpretation. Let me explain what I mean. So one of the main ways I found myself thinking about the movie as I watched it is that it's a parable for creativity, right? So you have Javier Bardem playing him, who is obviously God on one level, who is obviously the creative genius, who is a stand-in for Darren Aronofsky, which, by the way, this movie comes really close to pulling a Shyamalan lady in the water, but it doesn't because unlike what Shyamalan did in Lady in the Water, where he casts himself as the artistic genius um, who's going to save the world, uh, to the extent that, that 
Darren Aronofsky is ca is projecting himself into the character of him, and I think he is to a large degree. Uh, it's a very critical uh, the casting, and so it's much more interesting than what Shyamalan did because of that. I think if you, that, that's it's still a dangerous line to walk, but I do think that the more I thought about that one, the more I think that element actually works because it's him is not a sympathetic character in this movie. Uh, he there's all sorts of reasons to dislike him, and uh, to that extent, Darren Aronofsky has written a very self-critical film, and I, I think that's to his credit. Uh, so I, if we interpret this as creativity, obviously the movie is secular because the artist's life is secular, and um, you you know one project ends and the next project begins, and I think there's you could the way I was reading it is that there's a tension between the the kind of platonic ideal of a story as represented by Mother, by Jennifer Lawrence's character, and then the artist who actually has to bring the platonic ideal into the world. And the second you, you know, if you have this germ of greatness that you contemplate as a writer, the second you actually try and uh, mediate that, that idea into the world, you've made it something less than what it is in its ideal form. And I think that's very interesting. I think that's a very interesting idea. And then you can interpret the different visitors that come along as you know, feedback that you get, or, or you can interpret them in a couple ways. I think you can interpret them as other people contributing to the story. You know, it's for the case of somebody like Aronofsky, you've got editors, you've got production companies, you've got all that, and there's this corruption of the ideal because it's not just the artist and his ideal sitting in the dark room. It's like to actually bring it into the world involves opening the doors and letting people in and getting feedback that goes against the ideal and then eventually breaks, you know, the the crystal that's in his office and and he very much disrupts the writing process and then, you know, upon completion of the work as evidenced by uh, the birth of the child in, in the, the final act of the film, it's that it's a, both a wonderful moment but it's a hellish moment because then the floodgates are unleashed and now everybody is invited in to become part of your artistic process and you, you have people who are going to do God knows what with, with your idea that you've had as an artistic creator and they're going to take it in all sorts of interpretive directions that you don't like and they're going to be critical of things you felt passionate about and, and it's eventually um, going to get to the point where the creation process simply can do nothing but burn itself out because that is ultimately the end of releasing something that you love and care about into the world as, as a creator. And so I feel like that was a really interesting reading and uh, where I feel like the Bible stuff can work as a really interesting backdrop onto that is that it, you can establish then a link between every artist as an individual creator, as a sub-creator to use, I think that was Tolkien's uh, term, speaking of us as sub-creators, uh, in relationship to God, the ultimate creator, and I think there's an interesting link there. So, the Bible stuff, yeah, I mean, if somebody says, I really feel like that should have been more subtle, I'm not going to fight you on it, it's like, I can kind of see that, but it worked for me. I think it's interesting. I, I, I like that Darren Aronofsky, even though he's an atheist, I believe, is, is really a thoughtful person when it comes to spiritual matters. Uh, I like Noah a lot. I, I, I think that that was uh, evidenced in that movie as well. And so all that to say that I think there's some, that, that you can go some really interesting interpretive ways in this movie. Uh, you have the Bible stuff, you have the creative one, you have the, the uh, marriage one, you have, uh, you know, the ecological one, if you must go there, other people have thrown out other ones, and so I feel like once you, if you can push past with this movie, it's kind of unsubtle, in-your-face approach that Aronofsky has taken, both with what's on film and his reaction behind there, you actually get into something that's pretty great. And that's why, like, if he had been able to polish off those elements and keep his mouth shut, he would have had a masterpiece here because I love that once you push through what this movie's trying to get you to think, it's so open-ended and there's so much to think about and so many different ways to look at things. And I think it's a great movie from that perspective. It just needed, it needed a little more lynch, both in terms of 
uh, polishing the script and uh, Darren Aronofsky's response to it. So if you've seen Mother, let me know what you thought in the comments. I had written a review for Letterbox, uh, my Letterbox account, right after I saw it, so I'll probably throw that in there below. I said a lot of similar things, but th that was my immediate reaction, so maybe I said some things different there, I don't know. Uh, follow me on Letterbox if you're not on it. Uh, I, I really enjoy Letterbox, so uh, go check that out, and uh, I'd love to follow you back if you follow me. Anyway, so this is Ben Bono for the Sci-Fi Christian Reviewing Mother. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye.